there and welcome back to my channel. Today's question is one that I get probably more than any other question. And the question is, help, my students always say, I can't think of anything to write. So if that's you, if you've ever heard your students say, I can't think of anything to write. What do I, I can't, I don't have any more ideas. This is the video for you. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and keep watching because we are gonna get into some strategies that are going to take care of this problem once and for all. All right, number one, here's the deal. You have to model what you want to see. I know YouTube, we have a vast array of teachers watching, some with lots of experience, some of you are student teachers, some of you have been teaching for a few years, but writing has just not been the jam. So I'm gonna say this because I don't wanna assume that anything is just common knowledge when it comes to teaching. You have to model. And when I say model, I mean you are thinking out loud so your students can hear. So it's almost like you are giving them a script that you want them to think about when they are doing their own writing. So for me, I'm going to always take whatever the planning sheet is that I'm going to be using for the unit. I'm going to put a couple examples here of different planning sheets. My planning sheets, they vary based on the kind of writing that we're going to be doing. So if it's going to be a non-genre specific unit, which does happen because sometimes I just want you to write and you can write whatever you want to write because the point of my unit might be management or the point of my unit might be illustrations. It may not be tied to narrative, opinion, argumentative, right? Those sorts of things will come, but sometimes I have a little unit or some time where I just want you to write. So if it's a non-genre specific unit, I'm just going to say ideas can come from anywhere. I was driving down the road the other day and I saw something really cool and I thought this would be a great story and I'm going to literally think out loud. I'm going to become a storyteller. I'm going to tell my kids this is what you do as a writer. Now, if it gets specific and we're jumping into a genre study, then the planning sheet is going to look different and then the way that I think about it is going to be different. So if we're doing something like persuasive writing and I'm thinking about all of the things that I want kids to consider when it comes to persuasive writing, that is what I'm going to model. I'm going to literally think aloud right in front of them, sketch pictures in front of them, and I'm going to show them exactly how I want this thing to go. And then when they take off, they now have a foundation because if they get stuck, I can say, do you remember when Mrs. Tab was stuck? And I said, oh my gosh, I can't think of anything. Oh, wait a minute. And I can give them my example and I can say, so what does that look like for you? Okay, you're stuck, but Mrs. Tab thought about a vacation or a family uh, ex experience or something that happened at school, what is your version of that? And then the kids are typically able to model after what they saw me do. So that's the first tip. You have to model. You have to be so explicit with the process of getting ideas. The rest of the strategies are going to be a little more concrete um, and just some ideas that you might want to try with your students. So jumping into the next one, which is all about this idea of batch collecting. If you have ever heard of batch cooking, okay, you're here on YouTube. So like literally type in batch cooking after this video and you'll see all these people who go into their kitchens and they even have parties. Like they'll get all the, the, the other families in the neighborhood and they'll come together and they'll divide and conquer and each person will make a bunch of meals that are going to go in a freezer. And the idea is I'm going to cook one time and then these meals are going to carry us for the next month right and so when you are batch collecting the idea is we're gonna do all the hard work once and then we're gonna have some time to draw on all of that hard work that we did and we can pull out from that I do the exact same thing when it comes to writing whatever the unit is whatever genre we're studying I'm taking the first session or two some kids it even takes them three writing sessions and we are going to collect a bunch of ideas why because for the rest of this unit I am not about to listen to a bunch of children say I can't think of anything I can't think of anything oh yes you can because we took some time at the beginning of this unit and we made sure to collect a handful of ideas so that can look a couple of different ways depending on the grade level that you teach. So I'll put some examples up here, but you can just see these are examples of children that know what they want to write. And the beautiful thing about it is when we get all of this hard work out of the way, 
they get to pick one of those ideas, which is why my writing process chant says at the very beginning, first things first, pick an idea. This is where they come and they pick one idea that they want to write about. Now, of course, this is just more in uh, writing instruction. If they're doing a writing assignment or responding to a prompt, then guess what? I'm giving them the idea and this is not an issue. But these are those assignments where you tell children to respond to something that requires them to be a little more creative or open-ended and they struggle. These batch collecting ideas can be really, really powerful. So they pick one of those ideas and then they would move on to the next step of the writing process, which is plan it out. They have to make a plan. So when they are batch collecting, they get through the writing process and then they do something that is so much fun. They love to do it. They pull this sheet out and they get to cross off the idea and they can see, oh my gosh, at the beginning, I said I wanted to write about these six things or nine things and I did one of them. So they get to cross it off and then they get to look at the other remaining ideas and they can say, which one do I wanna write about next? And it's important because they might wanna revisit some of the things that they thought they wanted to write about a week ago, but now it's a week later. We're all different people now. Maybe you don't wanna write about that thing anymore. And so they can revisit those ideas and they can say, okay, I think I'm gonna write about this one next and they can start to plan out that next writing piece because they've already done the hard work of collecting those ideas. So batch collecting has been a game changer for sure. I also like to include a batch collection sheet in my student writing folders and I'll show you what my writing folders look like. So you can see here this writing folder includes everything that goes right along with the writing process because if you've watched any of my videos I'm constantly saying I am a process first writing teacher. So everything we do goes through the writing process. My lessons, the acronyms, the strategies that I teach, everything is attached to the writing process because I want children to have a big picture, a conceptual understanding of writing, and then whatever I put in front of them, it's going to make sense because they're going to be able to connect it. So when I give them this writing folder, it's just a file folder. Whatever piece they're working on goes right in the middle there. They close their folder up and that's that. There's no pockets to deal with because when we're dealing with young writers, that can just get tricky. So kids love to just be able to put their writing in the folder, close it up. Um, but when it's time to write and they open it up, you can see here right at the top, we've got first things first, pick an idea. And what's cool is I picked these folders on purpose with the prongs on top because I wanted them to be able to add more idea sheets as the year goes. Because I thought it would be really cool to whatever unit we're in, I would give them a little uh, version of the idea sheet and they could slide it on top of the this area and whatever they get done, they get done. But the ideas that they don't get done, instead of throwing it away, they can just simply keep it, right? And we can put a new idea sheet on top of it if we're moving to maybe a narrative unit or an opinion writing unit, they would just put their new idea sheet right on top. And then at the end of the year, they can take their writing folder with them, but they will have a collection of writing templates that they used throughout the year and any writing pieces that they didn't get to, they can continue that work at home, which I think is really cool. And so you've got first things first, pick an idea. Then we have some structures for plan it out. This is all about how to organize your writing, no matter what you're writing, different kinds of writing have structures that need to be followed. And this is a whole, I mean, I can do a million videos on this and eventually I will get to them, but making sure kids, even in kindergarten, have an understanding of writing structure is so powerful. It's gonna, it's gonna give them such a clear vision for how to structure their writing, especially the older they get. So this is really important. Third step, write, write, write of the writing process. That's where I was saying they just put whatever the writing piece is in there. Then we've got some revision strategies. Those come from most of my syntactic awareness routines. If you don't know what I mean by syntactic awareness, I will put a video uh, here that you can watch that will introduce the concept and you can see what that looks like. But the cool thing about syntactic awareness is not only does it grow a grammar ear and help kids develop those grammar skills real time and those skills really transfer, they turn into revision strategies that really make their writing better. So for an example, one of the routines that we do in syntactic awareness is sentence combining, where they take two small sentences, they put them together. That's great, right? Because that takes a lot of work and a lot of skill to properly put those sentences together. Well, once they get good at that, 
I then ask them to use that as a revision tool. So when they are getting to fourth step, you've got to revise. I say, what's revise? And the class says, make it better. I say, oh, here is a strategy for you to make your writing better today. I want you to find three places in your writing that you can revise, but I want you to do sentence stacking. So find three different places where you can combine some sentences to make a stronger sentence. And I've got nine different routines and most of them transfer beautifully to a revision strategy. So you can see there's a couple ideas at this point in the year. Maybe my class is very comfortable with those four strategies. So those are little mini anchor charts to remind them you can do more than just pick a word, make it better. That's typically what we tell kids to do when it's time to revise. We'll say, oh, go go see if you can make a word better. Or we'll say show, not tell, but not really give them enough experiences to really do that well. And so syntactic awareness really does just turn into the most beautiful revision strategies ever. And then you can see there at the bottom, we've got our editing reminders. And then once they hit that point, they're ready to publish, get that writing ready for the world. And that's that. The last two activities I want to share with you are just fun little things that make cute bulletin boards or there's quick little activities that you can put together. So I'll show them to you. These and everything that I ever show in any of my videos are all a part of my writing program. Um, if you want more information about that, make sure you check the description box. But I try to also just show ideas that if you're like, I don't need to purchase anything, I can do that on my own. Yes, do that. I love that for you. If you want it ready made, go check out the program. Um, if you are like, I can just steal that idea. Great, steal it. That's that's why I'm here. Um, so this one right here is really great because if students are struggling with the generation of ideas, you can have them do this cute little author website um, activity that can turn into a bulletin board. So you'll see there, they get to come up with their own website. They draw a picture of themselves. And the idea here is we want them to identify as authors, because if you think you're an author, then the thought becomes, well, of course I can think of ideas to write because I'm an author, right? And so you want them to start to identify as author. So, hey, you guys are all authors. You're going to be writing so many amazing writing pieces this year. We need to get your website together. So they'll write their likes and dislikes. And that's because, you know, I will tell my kids that as a reader, one of the things that I love to do is finish a book. And then I look at the author and I'm like, who is this person that I just read their words? I want to know more about them. Where are they from? What did they like? I get curious about the people that wrote something that I spent a lot of time reading. And so I'll talk to them about that and then they get to create their own. And then what I love at the bottom, it says, here are some upcoming pieces of writing that you know I'm gonna be putting out this year. And then you just ask them to dream and just say like, what kind of writing do you wanna do this year? Do you wanna make a book? Do you wanna write an article? And then you give them a chance to sort of just like dream it. And then I ask them to identify what kind of writer they want to be. Are they a funny writer? Are they a writer that loves to give information? Do they love to tell stories that are make-believe? And so they'll identify three traits that really describe them as writers. And then I take these and I will hang them out in the hallway. And then I will send an email to my staff and I will say, please stop by, take a look at a few of these and find one of my students and please say, oh my gosh, I saw that you are going to be writing about whales this year. Whales are my favorite animal. Can you please make sure you let me know when you publish that piece of writing about whales? Because I have to read it, okay? And, you know, and the kids, if, some, if a teacher comes up to them and they're like, whoa, how did you know I wrote about whales? Oh, I put it on the bulletin board. Somebody actually read it. And now I have an audience that is waiting I better get to work. Like, I got to get busy. Like, I'm a famous author. I have people waiting on my words. And so it's just a really fun way to sort of jumpstart that idea of like, hey, I'm an author. Um, the final uh, activity that I'll share here is it's a little more fun. Um, depending on the grade level, it may not work, but I'll explain it and you can decide if it's something that might work for students in your classroom. So what you would do basically is you would give each student the paper that looks like this. So you can see in the center, the kids would write their names, okay? And then there are different prompts going around the paper there. So it might say something like, you are really good at, or you know so much about, right? Maybe it says, I noticed that you like, or something you should write about. So there are little 
prompts going around the paper. Once your kids know each other well enough, you can have them write their name in the middle and then they would each get something to write with. They'd stand up, you can make it fun, you could put a little music on, have them sort of walk around and wherever they stop, they would look at the paper and figure out who sits there and then you're going to call out a symbol, right? And I put symbols there because I did this with a kindergarten class toward the end of the year because we were sort of uh, hitting a point where a lot of kids were like, we've been writing a lot all year and I need more ideas. And so I thought, what if they help each other get ideas? And so I would call out, you know, diamond or sun or moon or whatever it was, and I would read the prompt to them. And so I would say, find the diamond and the diamond might say, you seem to know a lot about and I would go read the name you know and the kids knew where they sat so if they couldn't read the name they could say like oh this is JC seat and um I need to think of something that JC seems to know a lot about JC is always talking about hair she's always got the coolest braids and beads and her hair is different all the time and that is so awesome so I'm gonna either write or draw a picture of hair and you do that a few times right you do that a couple times until the papers are starting to fill up and then the coolest thing happens. They go back to their seats and they sit down and they look at their paper and now they have this collection of ideas that came from their peers because they're nosy. They know everything there is to know about each other. They're always asking each other questions. Um, one of the coolest experiences that I had with this was when we did the activity and we got back to our seats and there was one little boy and a couple of people had said the same thing. And it basically was a version of teach us about Jamaica. You're always talking about Jamaica. And this child was from Jamaica. He always wore black and yellow and um, green. He had a hat with a Jamaican flag on it. And he just very quickly was like, oh my gosh, all these people really want me to teach them about Jamaica. Let's go. Wrote the coolest book about Jamaica. And so it was just a really cool way to sort of wrap up the school year. I mean, you could do that anytime. But for me, that particular year, it came toward the end of the year because the kids were actually able to do the activity. And so with that, those are just some ideas that I have around collecting these ideas. I'm batch collecting ideas. I'm modeling. I'm getting the students involved. I'm helping them identify as authors. Those are all the things that I love to do to really help with this idea of I can't think of anything to write. Yes, you can, right? And I'm going to give you lots of tools to make sure that that happens. If you found this video helpful at all, please do me a huge favor. Make sure you subscribe. I want to help teachers. I want to help students. I really want to make sure that people that need help when they're trying to teach writing, find some strategies that work for them. And I'm such a believer in this process first framework. I'm working with teachers and schools all over the country. I do PD. I do virtual trainings. I love to work with educators more than anything. And I love to hear the success stories from teachers when they try these strategies in their classrooms. It is just amazing. So if you want to check out the writing program, I've got free resources, all those things, check out the description box. Make sure you join the newsletter and I will see you in the next video.